In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to all of you who are joining in this celebration of the Easter Eucharist, those who are here in this church this morning, and those who are joining us online. We use blessed water in remembrance of our baptism in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Let us praise God for the Easter victory of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. O God, may your people exalt forever in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what was announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that the Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The Word of the Lord. Let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. I call the God of justice, gave me answer. From anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord walks wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me whenever I call him. Lord, lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. You have put into my heart a greater joy. In peace I will lie down and fall asleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Christ Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins and for our sins only but not on, he is, and not only for our sins but for those of the whole world the way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments those who say i know him but do not keep his commandments are liars and the truth is not in them but those who keep his word, the love of God is truly perfected in them. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burnt while you speak to us. Alleluia. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy, they were amazed. He asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, 
and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning here in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Some time ago, I ran across a story by Nicholas Cage. It was entitled, My Mother, Eleni, The Search for Her Executioners. His mother was a Greek peasant and was among several who were murdered during the political unrest in 1948. The crime for which she was executed was that she smuggled her son out of the country before they could be captured. Thirty-two years later, that son, Nicholas, quit his job to find the killer. And the story relates the usual kinds of trials and tribulations that went with trying to find war criminals. But he found him one day. He was in a comfortable apartment, taking a nap, in the perfect position for Nicholas to kill him, to avenge his mother's death. And as he was standing over him, Nicholas remembered at that moment what his mother actually stood for. He had been told how his mother had not spent the last of her strength cursing her tormentors, but found the courage to face death because she had done her duty to those whom she loved. In this he realized that love was the motivating force of her life, and it was a force that still bound them together. And he realized that to take revenge would be to destroy that bond. He was grasped by grace of her own example. That love of his mother reached through the years and transformed him beyond the need for revenge. He came to know what and who his mother was, what she stood for, that she lived Christ in her life. In the Easter readings, we come to know who Jesus is and what he stands for. In his meetings with his disciples, they come to know him more closely and more fully. And his followers are transformed in the process of recognition from being a cowering, frightened group behind locked doors to a courageous band of evangelists who set out to spread the good news of the salvation won for us by Jesus through his passion, death, and resurrection. It suggests that Jesus in intended ministry not to end with death and revenge, but to continue through transformation of followers. And Jesus came to be known through ordinary things. He showed up at their meetings. He talked to them. He consoled them. He ate and drank with them. The way he blessed, the way he shared food and broke bread were very ordinary things to share. And they recognized him through how he did what he did and what he said. What difference then does Easter, the Easter event make? Sister Joan Chittister, I think, hit the nail on the head when she said, the resurrection did not change the world. The resurrection changed the apostles who are supposed to change the world. Eleni was changed by the resurrection, and she, through her example and her love, changed her son. George Weigel, in an article, talks about the Easter effect, how Christianity almost unbelievably within two centuries 
won over vast numbers of people to accept Jesus as their Savior. Christianity led a new way of people treating one another, loving and caring for all indiscriminately as Jesus did. And so we need to let the resurrection change us, to change our lives to lives that are filled with simple generosity and caring and love for one another. And if we let that happen, we transform the world a little bit at a time. If we pay attention, we see that this seems to be one of the driving forces behind the way Pope Francis teaches and acts and interacts with people. Jesus' love transformed and transformed. We find who he is in this meal which we gather around this altar to celebrate. We need to let that body and blood of the Lord transform us to be like him, to become instruments of love and peace to transform the world. our faith in God. Please respond with the words, I do believe. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do, do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary? I do, do you believe that he suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell, and on the third day rose again from the dead. Do you believe that he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and that from there he will come to judge the living and the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. As we hear his word in the scriptures, our hearts burn within us with a longing for God's presence. With Easter hope, let us express our needs in prayer. that those who teach in the church, especially Pope Francis and Bishop Neary, that they will remain faithful to the gospel and repentance and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that leaders of the church, governments, and non-government agencies will work together to to work for peace and justice, especially in Ukraine and Gaza. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that all who are in need may, in, Christ, in Christians transformed by the resurrection, experience the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. that those who were baptized or received into full communion in the church this Easter continue to grow in their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ, our advocate with the Father, will bring the dead to eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, we ask you to grant these prayers through your risen Son, 
the glorious Prince of Life, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our collection today is a monthly one to support the upkeep of this church and our worship together. May my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty.
O Lord, receive these offerings from your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. (laughs) 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and taught by divine teaching, we dare to say, evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ.
Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the table of the Lamb. Amen. 
Let us pray. O Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.